We've got a preview of golf's third major, the U.S. Open. We'll have Rod Black from TSN stopping by and a mystery guest. I'll give you a little hint. He was named the top news anchor in the country. Joe Tilly Sports, coming up. Welcome to the program. We've got two special guests for you here today for our special U.S. Open program. Let me introduce them to you. First of all, he is a native of Winnipeg, hosted four Olympics for CTV over a 36-year broadcasting career. He hosts Raptors in the NBA on television. He is a CFL play-by-play -play voice. He is a TSN golf announcer. He is a host of international hockey. He also calls curling and, of course, is the voice of figure skating in Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Rod Black. And he is a native of Ottawa. Don't hold that against him. He started as a reporter back at CFTO in 1979. He quickly moved on to the anchor desk, anchor of Toronto's most watched news in parts of six decades. He was named Canada's best news anchor by the Canadian Screen Awards. He is the honorary chief of the Toronto Police Service. He is past director of Variety Village chair of the Ability Center, and numerous other charities. He is a member of the Order of Ontario and a hell of a golfer, ladies and gentlemen, our good pal, Ken Shaw. Ken, welcome to the program. Hey, Ken, let me start with you, my friend. Is it is there any truth to the rumor that you were the guy who got in Doug Ford's ear and said, hey, Doug, let's open the golf courses? Were you the guy? Uh, uh, we're hearing... Uh, we're hearing a lot of some background news uh, music, Vic. I just to let you know. Yeah, Are you guys hearing it? That? There yeah, we go. It's a little, there you go. A little dire straits for you. Yeah. A little dire, I don't know why he's playing dire straits. What does that mean? MTV. That's Ken. I don't know if everybody knows. Ken Shaw, actually, he, he said all that stuff. And Ken's one of the greatest guys in the world. I don't know if you know this. He is also a DJ at a nightclub. And unfortunately, right now, the nightclub's not open. And he plays, right. he plays well, some there. crazy I'm hits. The kids, the kids get lit to it. <laughs> He's still there. I He's still, still show up in the nightclub. Yeah, nobody else is there. He's, Ken is there. He's spinning records. Yeah. So, Ken, no, we, we know eat. that you had a, that. That uh, Rod, or, sorry, Doug Ford's got got his ear. You, you got his ear, and you, you told him to get golfing started, and he did, right? Is that what I hear? Yeah. Over here, I, I, I don't know where you hear that, but yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It, I, I had read an article in the New York Times that indicated that that the chances of you contracting COVID outdoors was 001 percent, and it seemed so low. And the first time we went through golfing. Uh, there was uh, there were there were zero cases of COVID connected to golfing. I I may have mentioned it to Premier Ford at one occasion, and uh, I can't take any credit for anything. That's his call, one hundred percent. But I was certainly knocking at the door. Okay, can you re be retired since January after six decades in the business, close to it? And uh, what are you doing now? How are you enjoying it? Are you still putting your suit on? Do you have your cereal in the morning or what, what's going on? He golfs. <laughs> he golfs. Yeah. And he golfs. And he golfs. And he golfs. And he's a DJ. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but every night at about 5.50, I do put on a suit and tie. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonder, about the, wonder about the old days. You know what? Uh, uh, first of all, Rod is absolutely correct, except for the DJ part. Uh, I, I do go a lot. And you know what? I have no business belonging on a broadcast with two veteran sportscasters like you two. I'm just a golf enthusiast. That's all. And I'm a hack out there. I'm not a great golfer. I just love the game. And, and you know, I, I like some of the history of the game, too. So thank you for inviting me with you two. Ken, oh, Ken you, you actually you, you belong. sell yourself short. First of all, if you say you're a hack, uh, you belong with us. Secondly, if you're a golf enthusiast, you belong. If you saw our picks for the previous majors, uh, I think we're going to lean on you heavily because we have sucked <laughs> so badly at this. So we're all in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Plus, 
two or three decades that I've covered golf, he is one of those players, probably the most spectacular player that's ability has an ability to go really low. And that's what he can do. He gets a lot of birdies. He's got full of bravado. You know, he's a guy from Trinidad and Tobago who, who became Canadian and loved this country. Uh, and, and he can go very low. So it was so cool. And to have one, two, I mean, again, we don't, we don't have that. The only time, the last time we had one, two in Canada was uh, the Montreal Canadiens uh, and uh, the Winnipeg Jets. That's it. One, two. That's it. Last <laughs> night. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I thought you were gonna throw the lease in there too, but I guess not. No, they're, okay, they're, so they're uh, actually they're four. Yeah, yeah, all right, in that division. Okay, so uh, uh, the you, you're right, you know, because the the the, the Champions Tour, we, we recognize all those names. We know all those guys. You know, in the PGA Tour, there there are some guys we know. There are some up and comers, but you know that, that Champions Tour, yeah, we can we get a soft spot for that. You know, we see that and, you you know, I see Mike win a couple of weeks ago and then now Stephen Ames winning. This is a lot of fun. A lot of a lot of good things happening in Canadian golf and Taylor Pendrith qualifying for the, uh, you know, for the U.S. Open. This is this is good stuff. OK, so let's talk about the U.S. Open. And first of all, Tory Pines. OK, the course was uh, recently renovated and redesigned by Reese Jones. Uh, Tory Pines South Course is it's longer, plays more difficult than it did before. Uh, the South Seeing areas were extended. The length of the course now is up to 7,800 yards. The ninth hole alone is uh, six. It's a 614-yard par five. There's also a par four that they can extend to 527 yards, I believe it is. Uh, you know, golfers uh, are, during the during the round, they're also going to have to deal with distracted view of hang gliders, paragliders soaring off the cliffs and at the south end of the course. Uh, they're going to leave that rough uh, nice and long as they do for the U.S. Open. And uh, it should be a good test for the boys. What do you guys think? Well, first uh, of all, in terms okay, of Tory Pines, I mean, it's a story course, right? And, and, and I'm sure we're going to talk about uh, Rocco Media and uh, Tiger uh, going back to 2008. But, but Joe, they're, they're not they're not going to play it at that length. It's probably going to play 7,200 to 7,400, depending on the and the wind. The USGA, I don't know about you guys, I hate the USGA, the way they set it up. I know they want these guys to look like us, you know, that, the, that they can't uh, right. s score low. But even uh, even the USGA makes it way too tough for the best in the, in the world. They've got the Kakuya grass which it, which is it's like trying to hit out of uh, steel wool and and it's so long and the and the grass is probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of four inches they couldn't go higher with that because nobody could get a ball out of five inches of, of that kind of grass um tory pines has has been a storied course and it's and it's earned its place in U.S. Open history. I think I think it's going to be fascinating. But I I, I think you know Rod uh, the 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 three of us go out there and we and we hack the ball around. I don't think anybody should look at these guys. And we go, lay up on a par three. Not so good. What's that, Sorry? Exactly. Lay, lay up on a par on three. A par three. <laughs> yes. That's right. Yeah. I don't have enough club to make it. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward I, uh, to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 I think, uh, I really think, well, first of all, it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's Tiger's place, right? And that's too bad that we can't have Tiger Woods there, especially uh, after the accident, especially after the way he had come back after his previous injuries. But I know he'll be watching. The thing about Torrey Pines, to me, uh, regardless of the U.S. Open, and, and guaranteed I will give the over-under of one no, I'll give it 90 minutes before somebody starts complaining about the course, the way they set up and the set it up. And that's, but we should get to know that. That's the U.S. Open. Uh, you know, they, yeah. they're, 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 are, uh, they're, they're satanic. You know, it's, it's like, okay, really? <laughs> but everybody knows that going in. So the greens are going to be lightning quick. The rough is going to be up. They want to protect the course. They want to pr protect the USGA, whatever. And the weather is going to be, I don't know what the whole forecast is, but it's good. It's going to blow. So you know that. Uh, but what it does is the guys who know that golf course excel on that golf course. And I can't see somebody who's never played that golf course before 
coming in, in, into Tory Pines and winning this. I okay, uh, now, Rod, I just wanted, before we get going, I, I want to say, okay, like, great job uh, once again hosting the, uh, the the World Hockey Championships. I can't believe Team Canada, man. Holy crap, they lose their first three games. They needed to rely on yeah. a, a regulation result between, I think it was Latvia and Germany for yeah. the last game at the tournament in order yeah. to squeeze into the yeah. quarterfinals. And then they win, win, win. Well, you know, that was crazy. Is this the craziest yeah, thing you've yeah. ever seen for Team Canada? Yeah, you know, um, I've been around a lot of world championships, you guys. And this one, at the beginning, I thought, oh, my gosh, here I am locked in for 17 days. Then again, I'm not I'm not doing anything else anyway. Like we're, I'm, I'm not, We couldn't even golf at the time because they had not lifted it. And I'm thinking, oh, man, this is going to be a long tournament if this team doesn't do something. And all of a sudden... Uh, this little team that could with uh, that was bereft of any really big, big superstar names. They get a player like Andrew Mangiapane to come over and things started to happen. And I do believe like like this, what we're going to talk about today, with all the golf and everything that's gone on. I think a lot of results are kind of pandemic related, if you know what I mean, is that we're in such a weird situation. It's very hard to predict. And, and, and so this team suddenly won. And as much as uh, history will say that they were probably um, – they had the least star power of any Canadian team. I think they're going to be my favorite Canadian team ever because of the way they won in COVID. It was, it was great. Yeah. Great job by Gerard Gallant coaching that bunch of uh, oh, that yeah. ragtag bunch, I guess you'd say. It was it was yeah. just just awesome to watch. Uh, yeah. The emotion from you guys in the panel and, and everything else you could tell it was yeah. really it was it was a lot of fun. Didn't okay, so love, really, really nice golf guys. story. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I did uh, didn't you love and I don't know if Kenny saw it. I still get chills. Every time I see athletes line up, especially hockey players, especially young hockey players, male or female, line up and sing Go Canada. It just gives you chills. And with the passion that they had it, to me, I, I never get tired of that. It was another beautiful moment. A lot of, we've had a lot of beautiful Canadian hockey moments, and there's another one. Some nice golf moments involving Canadians. Last weekend, we had Stephen Ames winning the, uh, the uh, PGA Champions event in Des Moines, Iowa. And Mike, we're finishing second. Have you ever seen a one-two finish by Canadians in any PGA champion? Have you ever seen that happen before? I don't think it has happened, has it? Um, I am trying to think. I don't think so. It would have to go yeah. back. It would have to go back. The only time I would ever see it on the pro tour was the Canadian tour, obviously. I, it, you, we have seen guys close before. I remember at this event, actually, the uh, U.S. Open yeah. a few years ago, uh, I remember Ian Leggett and Mike Weir were close, but not, not, at, the end of the, not at the end of the tournament. You know, you had kind right. of two Canadians. No, I, don't, I can honestly say I don't think we've ever, ever had that. And, boy, to have those two guys, hey, Kenny, hey, we can get older and get better. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you guys are almost so as old as Mike Weir. <laughs> I've never met Mike Weir. I have played with uh, Stephen Ames, a uh, pretty good guy. But when he was interviewed after that that game, uh, you know, he entered the day seven shots back. And he was asked if he thought he had uh, a shot at it. He, he, he didn't think he had any kind of a shot at all. Uh, it's nice to see Mike Weir coming back. I mean, he was, he was gone and put up the pasture, and all of a sudden, I mean, he's he's there. This isn't this isn't the uh, you know he he's already won on the Champions Tour, and it's like I think a lot of us had had written Mike Weir off, and all of a sudden, bam, he's back. Yeah, he had yeah, some injuries, yeah. didn't he, Rudd? Yes. Yeah, he did, and he had for the longest time. Honestly, I think it was an injury related to trying to get longer, and he you know he tore up his elbow for a while and his arm and. His, his his vision to get more length off the tee, which everybody has wanted, and, you know, to compete, especially after Masters. This really happened after Masters in 03. Uh, you know, to get more majors, to, 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 to stay up with the big boys who are hitting the ball so far. And he got hurt, and he concentrated so much on that that he, he, he suffered so many injuries. But it's so nice to see him playing golf again and have his, his short game back. And... Mike Weir is one of the best wedge players this game has ever seen. It, it helped him win the Masters. And I really think he's got that back. I just love his smile again. I love to see the – and I love that tour. 
because of the stars on that tour and the personalities on the tour. And for Stephen Ames, one of the things that we should all know about him is Stephen over the really can't because first of all, you got to navigate it around, but it's a beautiful, uh, the scenery is spectacular. It's like Pebble Beach. Um, I've, I've had good fortune of actually playing there uh, at, at 6,400 yards. <laughs> and, and Long enough, I, long I enough. Just, yeah, and I just, it, it's to me, we, Joe, we talked about this. You weren't on with us, Ken, with, with Howie a few weeks ago, how these, how the, the majors are set up now. You know, it always was the Masters. Then you had a two-month kind of break until the U.S. Open. Then you had another month until the British Open, the Open. And then you had another month until the, you know, the, the, the Week Brother PGA. And they wanted to bring the PGA into more relevance, which they have. And now everything is so compressed and you have to be on form. We always used to say, be on form before the tournament you can get yourself in. You have to be on form for all of these four majors because they're so tightly compressed. So the player who's playing the best, I still believe, who is in form is still the player that's going to win this tournament. And, hey, Torrey Pines is going to win as well. I, I cannot see it going deeper yeah. than it. If they get to double digits, I will be very surprised. Very surprised. No, well, there's going to be a lot of people digits, shaking their heads. Yeah, yeah. It'll be, It'll be the other way. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there'll be a lot of double digits in the plus side. Yeah, so, so okay, so let's talk about if, the last you, – go, go ahead, Ken. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Roddy, if, if you talk about who's got their game going in, I mean, I, I got to think of huh? – yeah, I guess. Well, here's the thing, Kenny. This guy is the ultra competitor, uber competitor. I would pick him every week. I mean, he's. I know he's not listed as number one, but I will tell you, I think he's the, the number one competitor in the world. He's always there. I don't think he has the best swing in the world. I don't think he's the most talented putter in the world. You know, I think Dustin Johnson is still number one. I really do believe that. I mean, he's a video game golfer, as we've called him. But John Rahm is this crazy crazy competitor and i wonder though two things it's going to go one of two ways for him after last week which was absolutely ridiculous i've never seen anything like that you know testing positive after testing negative for so long that goes to show you how crazy this uh this virus has been and a, a, a great uh, testimonial for getting vaccinated by the way because on the pga mm -hmm. tour they do not test players who have been vaccinated had he been vaccinated John Rahm's the winner of the Memorial by a long shot, and we're talking going about away. going away. Going away. Now, is it going to fuel him? Well, first of all, to get vaccinated. Fuel him because of what happened? And be, like I, I've never seen that. I couldn't believe that. It was almost like Justin Turner at the, Los, at the World Series when, you know, he ninth inning, same kind of thing, all of a sudden. Where it's a different strange rule. But John Rom, to me, exactly what you said, Kenny, has more form going in. I just wonder about right here, right now, if that kind of gutted him a little bit. And now moving forward, or use it as fuel. I love him. I love him. I would have put him, I know I think one of you guys have him as your pick. I would take him every week. Uh, but but I didn't. So but I love him. I love him. He's great. Yeah, yeah I I did, and I and I'll tell you partially why. So when you talk about uh, Tory Pines and 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 the way that the USGA sets things up, the the fairways are fast, and and the greens they 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 say that they set them up slower, but slower is usually like at, at 13 or uh, it, it won't be as fast as 14 on the stem meter, but it, but 13 as as we know is pretty quick on the putting greens. The rough is faster we ever play. And, and the length on the on the uh, the rough makes it impossible. So I got I've got to think this is a ball strikers uh, golf course. You have to it, it's it's like Bryson DeChambeau it hits the ball far, but he doesn't necessarily put it in the fairway. John Rahm does, and that's why I give John Rahm the uh, the advantage over somebody like yeah Bryson. I like. Yeah, I love I like I love that rationale in a, in a long way. So the only thing that I would say could happen, you know, it might be like a Bubba Watson or a a Dustin Johnson type of tournament in the fact that the Bombers may feel that if they hit it so far, even they take their penalty in the rough, they're still gouging. These guys are these guys are ridiculously talented. They would rather 
have a 110-yard shot out of the rough than a 150, 60-yard shot from the fairway. So we'll see if there's a guy, they start gouging, right? That's that's the kind of the mentality. But yes, yep. premium, premium on keeping it in the fairway, especially for the ball strikers. But then you get it on the green, and you got to putt your ball. So here's the other thing. Kenny, this is the first time I think we've had you on to give your, your all of our picks. And I do think one of the reasons that we have all failed miserably in all our picks, and by the way, our picks have been really good, I think, logical, within betting odds, is this is the most unpredictable year to pick anything, any sport, anything, particularly golf. And even going in, having form doesn't mean anything. Look what Phil Mickelson did. Nobody, even Phil Mickelson, didn't see that coming. He didn't see that coming. Yeah. yeah. And don't think for a minute yeah. the Phil Mickelson, even though people are giving him long shot odds, the Phil Mickelson couldn't win the U.S. Open. Finally. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I don't think he can. He's going in at uh, 50 well, yeah. to 1. I didn't, and, I, and, just, I didn't no, think he could win the PGA. He's higher than I, that. I didn't think that he could play like he's that. Higher than that. But a, a PGA yeah. course and a U.S. Open course are set up considerably yeah, difficult. Yeah. I just, yeah. There's a reason that U.S. There's a reason that Phil has never won the U.S. Open. There's a reason you could see yeah, why. But, I mean, he's come close. But who's, that, the course is ridiculously tough, and he tries. What he tries to do is he tries to outplay the course, and and, and every course he's ever played, and he can because he's, he's short. He's the best short game player maybe ever, ever. But. The thing is, you cannot do that at the U.S. Open. The only thing is new mentality. If if Phil Mickelson had the mentality he has right now as a 51-year-old, this mature 51-year-old with this focus, if he had that during his you know previous 20, 20, years, 20 years playing, 30 years playing, I'm going to tell you, he may have as many majors as Tiger Woods had he had that mentality. But that's not Phil. He's a gambler. But I, he, I wouldn't, I'm telling you, I wouldn't want him out. And he is so erratic off the tee, and that's why USGA is so difficult for him. What's he finished? Six times second? No, but nobody's finished second more often than Phil. And here it is. He's, he, he lives 12 miles away from Torrey Pines. He will be the favorite of the crowd. I mean, if he wins, that'll be one hell of a story. Oh, unbelievable. At, at, at unbelievable. But, but, I mean, already the PGA win was the story of the year. But he's right. going off at for 50 sure. to one for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, and you talked about Bryson and uh, Rod. You know, he, he is the defending champ, and he got it done because of his, his incredible length. Like he was he was bombing it, getting into the rough, getting into trouble, but getting himself out of trouble because he's 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 hitting such short shots into the green all the time. So he just threw caution out the window and went after it. But Phil, you know, he remember, you know, at the uh, at the PGA Championship on 16, he had the longest drive of the day on 16 and he's 51 years old and he's playing against all these young bombers. That tells you something. The guys, you know, he's changed too. Another thing about him, he's changed his diet, he's changed he's fasting uh, once a week and he's doing a lot a lot of different things with his body that's different and uh it, it's who knows, right? I think I got 50 to one and he's wearing sunglasses. Yeah, I, I would, I would, yeah, put, but, but, I, I can tell you one guy, I know one guy who's going to bet on him at 50 to one. Phil. Yeah. He's the most notorious, yeah, yes. most notorious gambler on the tour, uh, whether it's at a casino or uh, uh, on the golf course. Uh, I, I, I don't know about you guys, and again, I'm just as an unbiased announcer, objective announcer, you know, you, you treat this as it is. But it's been very hard during the Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson era to, unless you're, I guess, you're from the United States, to really have a rooting interest in Phil Mickelson for so many reasons. Because of that, maybe that little chip on his shoulder he had, that bravado, maybe the fact that, Ken, you're right, he's so erratic and he's a gambler and he does goofy things on the golf course. I got to tell you, though, this Phil Mickelson right now that we're watching, the guy on uh, Instagram and TikTok and uh, on commercials and on the matches. I love watching Phil Mickelson. I love watching Phil Mickelson from his personality outward. And you're right. Um, if he can get into attention, that would be crazy. You, you, you remember how the, the PGA championship finished between Brooks Kepka and uh, Phil. 
and the crowd on the 18th. And Brooks Kepka was just a member of the crowd. He had to fight his way through. It's like he, he, he was a nobody. And what a moment that must have been for Brooks Kepka to be put on the uh, caboose of a train like that. That 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 said an awful lot. And you're right, it's gonna it's going to boost Phil Mickelson. But here's the thing: if he does the bomb and gouge, the greens are set up to be so hard that they won't accept a ball that is coming in from the rock. And that's why it's gonna be so important to be coming in from the fairway. Yeah. Right, yeah. good point. So let's talk about let's talk about Bryson because I want to go to this uh, this little feud that's happening. Uh, uh, Brooks Kepka and uh, Bryson DeChambeau having you know. Would you like to see these guys duke it on the golf course? <laughs> I mean, does golf need a good line brawl? Is this what we? Are you? You want to see these I, guys I, drop the glove? I, I think I think I think there's a lot more hype than there is to it. By the way, this is nothing new, you guys. This is nothing new. Kepka and DeChambeau go back to, uh, and I guess I'm aging myself. You know, Arnie and Jack didn't like each other for a long time. You know, a lot of people don't know that. As they as they as they age, they got uh, they became better friends. Uh, they they became softer, and there there was a, a friendship. And I think it was because their rivalry was done. Phil and Tiger hated each other's guts. I mean, I, you can go through the history of golf. There are a lot of guys that. I know that there have been close to fist fights in either clubhouses, locker rooms, or parking lots between players. And by the way, on every tour, even the LPGA tour, it can happen. This one is unique because of the personalities involved. And I think Bryson DeChambeau is kind of in Brooks Kepke's kitchen a little bit. And Brooks is a football player who plays golf. And Bryson is a scientist. Right who plays golf, a bit of a nerd. And you know how the right, jocks yeah. and the nerds got along in high school? That's what this is. That's what this but also, is. You know, but, but Bryson has really beefed them. I mean, he looks like a football player, right? Bryson is, 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 a, is a nerd who's got a little bit of football player mentality. And, uh, you know, I, it would be a good dust if it, 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 I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, it's a fight I wouldn't mind seeing, you know? If they're gonna have Mayweather be, and uh, you know, it'd be better than fighting uh, Logan it'd Paul, it'd be better than that Paul Mayweather fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'd rather see I'd rather see ridiculous. Bryson uh, against uh, Brooks uh, than, than that. Than that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And no decision uh, on any fight that night. That that, that was that was ridiculous. No. People were just no. uh, making yeah. money. That's all that was. So tired. All right, but so going back. Tired to, of... Yeah. Well, so go ahead, Ken. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, Rod. I read not long ago something along the lines of Kepka is the, is the uh, high school quarterback and DeChambeau is the uh, science fair nerd. And, and yeah. so between those two, you would think Kepka would win. But by the way, let's talk about Kepka for a second because he's an enigma to me. If you took a look at, at the PGA stats right now, you don't see Kepka's name showing up anywhere. But when it comes to majors, Kepka shows up. What what is that? What is that in that mindset? The guy doesn't win week after week. Yeah. He doesn't even show up yeah. after week. You know, you know who he is? He is um he is uh the Tom Wilson. He is the the Brian Trache. He is um mm. That Pat Borders, remember when the Blue Jays won? He's that guy who only wins the big, big games and focuses everything on the big games and is a grinder. And 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 nobody ever talks about this. And Ken, you can really appreciate it. And Joe, you appreciate it. I know I do. Uh, the mental game of golf. The, the, the golf is is so mental. It is absolutely ridiculous. And because of has that that tunnel vision that I think Kepka has, he rarely ever gets rattled. You know, if he gets rattled, he just channels it completely the other way. You, you, his eyes are steely. He's like an assassin when he is out there. He is meant to win, and I think he is destined to win big championships his entire career because of that mentality that he has. I don't know where he got that from. I think it's obviously been ingrained since he's been a young boy. Tiger Woods has that mentality. Brooks Kepka has that mentality. Jack Nicholas had that mentality. The greats. The greats who win the big ones, they have it. And it's right here. It's right here. There's something about it. They And they're serial killers. They can just absolutely 
forget about what they did the time before, and they take it to the next shot. That's his greatest strength. That's why Kepka wins. And what about DJ? He didn't win, and he's had a lot of top 10 finishes. Uh, I, I, I know he's not going to win, and he's going off as a long shot. Uh, but it, but I really like him, and I, and I love his swing, and it's something that stands up. He, every swing is the same. It's the same tempo. He's like a um, he's like a Ryan Palmer. You could you can you can put up any two videos of his swing, and they're going to match 100% on on tempo. I, I hope the kid does well. I hope he I hope he at least finishes in top 20. Well, yeah, this, uh, uh, I, I was gonna, I, I, he's great. He's been right there all the way along the whole year. He's been right, he's been, he's been hanging around. He's, he's, he's ready really to close win. at every turn. He's ready to win. Yeah, he's ready. Yes. But yes, he hasn't won a major and he's been around there and it's so tough to win a major. I love, I love Corey Conn. I've watched him grow up in the game. I've watched him as a young amateur. I watched how his development came through the Golf Canada Foundation that does such great work and helping a lot of these young boys and girls get to that next stage. Corey Connors isn't here, by the way, guys, without the Golf Canada Foundation. He would be the first to tell you. I loved what he did at Kent State with her page and at learning in college and learning how to win. He hasn't quite learned how to put it together in a major. Ken, you're right. He'd be a good golf analyst, Kenny. Is that he, uh, <laughs> his swing, his swing is, 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 is like DJ's. Uh, probably just a little, you know, probably a little less form perfect, but it's so, it's replication. And I love, he also is an ice man. And I like that. Right. He's an ice man. And you yep. rarely see him, him boil. Like he's had some, you, you know, he, he'll take a double bogey and the next, you know, the next two holes, you go, oh, there goes, there goes Corey Connors in it. No, <laughs> you know, he'll grind, he'll grind back. So the grind, this is the grind. And he's Canadian, and he's a grinder. So, I, 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 I'd actually put some money on Corey Connors because maybe this is his time. Well, we'll uh, get to the picture so early, and you'll see that we all like Corey Connors a lot. But go ahead, Ken. Well, well, well so you know what? He doesn't have the killer instinct yet. With John Rahm, when he misses that putt, when he, when he hits the uh, errant drive, I mean, there's something being slammed down on the ground. Uh, I, it looks to me like he carries it on, but he, he somehow seems to come back. His, his drive is there. DJ's drive is there. Kepka's drive is there. And you're right. Corey Connors, really nice young man. Doesn't seem as though he's got the killer instinct yet. Maybe he's just too nice right now. Well, let's let's talk about the odds because I think that that has some some in, insight into that. By the way, the reason that uh, Corey qu uh, qualified is because he's uh, in the, among the top sixty players in the world. That's why he qualifies. Uh, those who qualified for the uh, season-ending tour championship, Mac Hughes falls into that. Mackenzie Hughes. That's why he qualified. Of course, uh, Taylor Pendrith qualified from the qualifiers, also the winners from the last 10 U.S. Opens, last five winners of the Masters, last six PGA Championship winners, and, uh, you know, then there's some other qualifier qualifiers too. So what we got here is we got, talked about there, earlier, there, 10 way, one, Joe, Dustin there. Johnson. Yep. So What's that? I don't know if you guys, uh, just for your listeners and viewers, almost 70 players in the field qualified yesterday. It's called the longest day of the year. The qualifiers yeah. that go on everywhere. Taylor Pendrith, it's a 36-hole event in about, I think there's about, I want to say 10 to 12 areas that hold these. And it allows even amateurs to get in. And that's why we hear about, you know, the great movie Tin Cup, right? Roy McAvoy, mm -hmm. you have to qualify, qualify at the U.S. It's the only tournament you can do that. You, Kenny, Joe, we could qualify for the U.S. Open. All you got to do is, and there have been some great stories. They just don't win. They just don't win, right? Generally, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. John no Rahm has yet to win a major. Right? Uh, John Rahm has yet to win a major. Yeah, I, I, I still, I, he's still my top pick. Rocco Mediate, two thousand eight. He had, he had to qualify. Oh, right. Yeah, but when I say qualifiers, oh, wow, I meant, I, I meant no name qualifiers. I didn't mean guys who are on the PGA Tour go in and just, hey, I'm going to get it. I'm, I'm talking about guys who come right. from our, our. Club pros. Yeah, club pros. They, they're, they're club pros yeah. You will see a club pro on the top 10. I guarantee you that's a prop bet. Guarantee a first day. You will see a club pro somewhere because they're good, but they don't win. 
Uh, right. It might be nice to see an amateur pop up uh, in the in the top twenty two. I, I don't right. know when yes. the last time was we saw an amateur coming through. He he, he lives around the corner. He's from he's from that area. He's from San Diego, hometown kid. Back the pressure of being a hometown guy could could hurt, but I don't think it's going to hurt him. He's a great great player. He's due. My longer shots are Phil Corey. We already talked about that, and Taylor Pendrith because of the he could be. The Rocco Mediate. I don't think people in Canada know enough about Taylor Pendrith. Uh, this guy is the longest hitter of all the Canadian players. He is unbelievable how far he hits it. He's a low scorer. He goes for birdies and eagles. He's a great personality. He's going to be on the PGA Tour next year from his status at Corn Ferry. He yep. is awesome. A great, great dude. And... I don't think he'll get rattled. He might be one of those guys. Qualifier in, carrying some form, uh, going to be tough. But, again, longer, longer shot. So those are my picks. Go ahead, Kenny. Kenny, well, I love his head. I love Andrew Schauffele. Uh, I, I love his swing. Again, he's a tempo player. Um, we'll see how he does with the rough there. But I really like him. His dad goes to uh, all the tournaments with him and, and uh, fires him up. Uh, a little bit along the way. Yeah, Phil, uh, Phil will be the story of uh, of the majors if if uh, Phil wins this. But, but again, I think there's a reason why he's going off at uh, fifty to one. DJ sounds like a a, a decent pick, even though I, I don't think he's going to be there in the end. Who, who was your third of your um, of your uh, main picks? Shoffley, Reed, and Johnson. Reed. Oh, Reed. You know, Reed is probably the best putter on tour. Uh, he doesn't get the credit for it, but I, I think Reed is probably he's probably in the top uh, three right now in in uh, putting on tour. Is he number four? And I think he's, he, he's good, he man. Has, he he has that killer mindset, and he doesn't care. You know, the controversies. You, you know, wouldn't that destroy? Any one of us, if your if your peers were were uh, were on your back about these controversies, whether it's in the sand or whether it's you know the the old business of uh, of uh, I, I'm in the rough, give me a, give me a five iron, I'll take that and pat down the ground behind the ball. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want that. Give me a six and I'll pat it down a little more. And then it's like, yeah, give me a seven. <laughs> yeah, some then, guys never recover. <laughs> and you know what? You live you live with that. You know what the, the term is? The term in once it's happened to you once. Think about how many times it's yeah. happened to Patrick Reed, you guys. It's happened, you know, the accusations have been flying for a long time. Happens to you once. You are called the fastest land animal Cheater. on the planet. Cheetah. Yeah. And that's your nickname. And it's it's tough. It's tough. But he has that mindset, Rod, that he, he's been in the controversies and it, it doesn't seem to affect him. Yep. Doesn't seem I to agree with at all. It, in fact, it seems to spur them on. Well, you know what? Some guys they're like that, and they just believe they're what they're doing is okay. They cheat, but they well, don't well, care because it's okay. Well, Bob again, Baffert cheats; Patrick he doesn't Reed. care. I'm going to give Patrick Reed the benefit of the doubt, even though I've I've been really. You have to kind of look at it in all way, shape, and form when you're in a tournament. You know, do you call the official over? Do you do it? I mean, the way we play golf. I mean, I take a foot wedge or whatever. I know in a tournament setting how difficult it is and a lot of these guys still don't have they don't have full recollection of the rule book they it's crazy how many golfers don't know all of the rules and what they can do it and is. so if it's in your own mind what you're doing is right and i think patrick reed knows what he's doing and he says it's right in his mind it's almost like that again that mentality that, that un unconscionable mentality that you have that it's 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 like a shoplifter like you know the the, the like, I, did, I just have to do it. But he doesn't, I don't think he, he know he feels he that he's, it, yeah. above, he does it every time and it's, it's right. It's, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. So he lives with it, Ken, and uh, it's controversial, but he's a talented player, man. He sure is. He sure is. Yeah. Annoyingly talented for, for a guy. Who, and the thing uh, is, so when you think about it, he doesn't need to do that. He doesn't need no. to do any of that, right? Yeah, and that's that. Yeah. That's what kind of befuddles us all, right? Well, okay, let's look at your meant, picks now. Yeah. Sorry, the rules Sorry, are meant to also to help you. The rules are meant to help you, right? right. That's why they do it. Tiger right. did it. 
you know, let's move this boulder. I can move the boulder. So yeah, 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 yeah. Use the rules. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Spieth. Okay, way, Kenny, you're fixed. Well. Yeah. Uh, I don't. June fourteenth is that the correct date that we start on? Uh, Friday. Friday night is our first night back, so we'll be back. Uh, today's Tuesday, the eighth. We'll be back on the eleventh. So a little earlier. Oh, eleventh, even sooner than I thought. Beautiful. That's, That's fantastic. Right. So uh, yeah. a lot of happy horsemen, right? Happy horsemen, everybody in the industry. Uh, that's the great thing about harness racing, thoroughbred racing, quarter horse racing. It's a, a trickle down effect throughout the economy. It's not just the people that just to the track. It's uh, you know uh, car dealerships that sell trucks, trailer dealerships that sell trailers, gas stations where everybody's gassing these things up, suppliers of feed, suppliers of all kinds of different things. So uh, it's a it's a an economy boosting industry big time. And it's uh, it'll be back. So yeah. So in addition to the thirty thousand people that are kind of directly involved in harness racing, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people, as you mentioned, within the spinoff, in the spinoffs. Now you know, and, and the thing about harness racing, it, it's it's naturally it's a socially distant uh, event anyway. I mean, it's and, and it was seems surprised was surprised right from the outset that you know we're allowed to play. You know, NHL hockey's allowed to go. And then when they bring back golf and not racing, it didn't make a lot of sense either because it's, 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 I mean, you had a long period of time there when, when racing came back, you know, without fans and there were like 10 races a night, 10 or so horse, uh, horses a race. I mean, at the various tracks and not one single case of COVID. So it, it just didn't make sense that this thing would be shut down anymore. But how has this affected the horsemen of the day? Um, it's just the fact that uh, not having a target date was tough because just like any other sports, uh, you want to be peak at your absolute peak when you return, uh, whether it's a basketball game, a hockey game, a golf game, you want to be uh, in top physical shape. And that's where it was hard because you want, you want to have these horses uh, at their absolute best and ready to go when the word go is given. But that was the tough thing is, you know, there was no uh, official – word until just yesterday so uh you know it's been a guessing game having horses close to being ready or absolutely ready they're they're two different things so that's what was the tough part so it's going to take a while have they set out to you know is, um, have they set out any kind of schedule like when when are we going to see the big races and when is the north america cup going to when are we going to see the north america cup have any idea yeah they've, yeah they've moved the north america cup back to september once again but, uh, you know, it had to be done because of the situation. Um, the Sire Stakes, the Ontario Sire Stakes program, which is uh, uh, um, um, uh, a multi-leg series of stake races over the course of the summer, that's really the uh, the thing that they're working on diligently right now to reel because um, it's not been completely affected. Some of the dates can still stay where they were originally scheduled, but some of the missed dates are going to have to be spotted uh, different points throughout the season. That's going to be the tough part because you don't want to overlap stake races. You want to give all these horses that uh, you know have been paid up to these stake events the opportunity to race in as many of them as you can. So it, it's going to be tough because uh, some of them are simply going to have to overlap just because of the nature of the situation. Now I know some of the some of the horses were shipped to the states. Some of the uh, drivers went to the states. Some of the trainers went to the states. Are they all coming back, or have we maybe lost a few? Um, I would say horse-wise, um, some of them may have been lost. Some of them will stay there. Some of them are going to go there anyway. Um, I would say the greater majority are going to come back if they're not back already. Um, as far as the drivers are concerned, they're all going to come back. Uh, they've just gone down there because some of the, uh, some of the local trainers went the, a certain number of horses that are prepping for stake races, be it in the U.S. or be it here in Canada. So um, I think it's a good move for them them too because you're sharp you don't want to be away from your sport or game uh for any length of time so i think those guys have an advantage uh compared to the guys that you know maybe stayed here uh, just that sharpness that quick uh there's so many uh split second decisions that have to be made and sitting in the bike and just getting the feel of the horse too it's uh i've never i've never done it so i don't know but i'm, I'm just assuming that's the way it would be so well, I guess you'd have to base it on, you know, the, the, the form early in the season and what they did maybe last year as two-year-olds. But are you seeing anybody, any horses, any horses in mind that you're thinking might be uh, 
serious contenders for this year's North America Cup coming up in September? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Joe Holloway, a uh, guy who's had a lot of great horses, Jenna's Beach Boy. She's a great lady. A long, long list of good ones. He's got a horse named Perfect Sting who uh, had an undefeated two-year-old season. Uh, I think he's had just one start this year. He had a, about a sickness, but uh, he qualified the other day at the Meadowlands in 148 and change, I believe. So he's, uh, he's the horse that everybody's got their eyes on. Ron Burke's got a bunch of great ones. Nancy tactor has got some nice ones. Uh, Ian Moore, a local trainer, is actually stable at the same training center that I am at up the road from my house here. Uh, he's got a very nice cold and lawless shadow. Jack Darling, another local trainer. Uh, he's got a colt named Bulldog Hanover. They're serious players, and uh, I guess you're not going to you're not going to know until it gets uh, closer to crunch. Um, it, there's a lot of surprises. Some horses uh, they don't find that two year old form coming back, whereas and other horses come out of the woodwork that weren't necessarily great two year olds. Maybe they needed some extra time to mature or develop or whatever it was, mm -hmm. or they had a setback as a two-year-old. Um, you always get those kind of horses too. But a lot of the major players from last year that were great two-year-olds, they've uh, they've announced their presence early this year with good-looking qualifiers or good-looking performances in some of the early season stakes. Well, you know, you did mention your barn a little bit earlier, and I want to ask you about that. Uh, tell us about your stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's grown quite a bit in the last little while, and you got some uh, some good horses there. And uh, I saw I one of your so. winners recently, and you got the chance to call that one. That was kind of fun. Tell yeah. us about how you got involved in what, how did, how this came about. How how did you get your barn and uh, and the, the story here? Um, I've always owned horses. Um, uh, at different levels. It starts out generally with cheap horses, like horses that are inexpensive and uh, you just want to have a little bit of fun with. But it was really when it buying yearlings that I really got the bug because it's like it's starting out with uh, a plate full of clay and you make it into something awesome and nice. Uh, that's the same way it is with these horses. You buy them as yearlings. They they haven't had a lot of work done to them. Uh, so it's you're starting out with a raw product and you're trying to get to the point where um, it's a, a racehorse that can find its way to the winner's circle. It's really gratifying, um, especially with homebreds. Uh, I've got my own broodmares here at my farm. Um, so I'm there the day that the foals are born, and then you can watch them grow up, uh, you know, to be yearlings. And then at the end of the, uh, the fall in the yearling season, that's when you're actually taking them to a training center and you're putting them through the motions, you know, get them used to a harness, get them used to a jog cart. Um, Shorter and faster as the weeks go on, and then in the summertime, it's the real fun time of year because it's the time the qualifiers are ready for those guys, and it's like Christmas Day for everybody the first day of the qualifiers because uh, you really find out what you've got then. You know, and 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 you talk about the, the like the whole process right from you know watching them you know come out as foals and then getting to the racetrack, eventually getting to the racetrack, and now you're calling the race. Tell me, is it, do, you, do you find yourself being a little bit biased, maybe paying a little more attention to your horse than you do the other ones? It must be, take some, take some work to sort of stay unbiased, I suppose. It's hard. Um, I, I really make a concerted effort to be unbiased about it just because uh, it's a choice, my choice. Um, yeah. Uh, when it's deserving, when, when they deserve getting a, a – uh, a more excited call because they're going to win then yeah but not not over the top you just you just want to be right. on the sidelines and and be thankful that your horse raced well or if they happen to win that's that's great too um but i try and keep it low key as i can fly under the radar right right so tell me uh what horses from your barn are the ones that we're going to watch out for um, I've got a nice filly. She raced last year. Her name is She's a Sassy Beach. So she's three, three years old. Mm -hmm. um, she's one of the very first actual homebred foals that uh, I've had. And uh, she had a pretty good two-year-old year for me. Um, she's a couple of times. And actually, when I finish this interview, I'm going to enter her to race on Friday night at Mohawk if they've got a class for her. So um, she's a good one. Uh, I've got a little brother, in fact. He's one year younger than her. He trained last Wednesday at Mohawk, so he's ready to qualify. And they've got qualifiers for the two-year-olds for the first time on either Friday or Saturday. That's up to the race office. Uh, his name is Bob Loblaw. 
and don't make his <laughs> you got to call that. A race color yeah, name's a horse, Bob Loblaw. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to have fun, right? In life, no, nothing's more magical than making. He seemed to have that attitude until his father-in-law had a talk with him about how he needed to focus on putting in particular. But DJ, DJ, I don't think he's made the cut the the last uh, couple of majors. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's going on in his head right now. Well. There, he might have a knee problem. I mean, it, it, it's, it's possible that he's got a, a, a bit of a knee problem. Are you patting your dog? I know there was, there, there apparently, apparently there was video that you're patting your dog right that, now. Uh, what's that? Who's that? You're, you're patting your dog, aren't you? I'm your not patting right my there. dog. Somebody's got a dog. Somebody's got a dog. Who's got a dog? dog it's not me. Who's okay, got a dog? Somebody's somebody got a dog. That's not appropriate. <laughs> 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 anyway, there was video that, that uh, Pauline, uh, Pauline shot of him jumping on the back of a boat and apparently he had a knee injury and that's why he couldn't make the, uh, the Byron Nelson and, and uh, he pulled out at the last minute. That's what I heard and who knows what, what's really happening because these guys aren't about to tell anybody what's really happening. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's, the, he's the favorite. He's the, the, you know, he's, he's the guy that he's, everybody's still picking to win. He's, uh, I think, 11 to 1. I don't get that. William I do not get yeah. that. Oh, he's going yeah. off. You're right. The favorite, the ten to one, and I, I, yeah. I just don't see it. I just don't see. It. Yeah, you know what it is, guys. Um, it, it's just the perfection of his game, uh, which is imperfect right now, and he's not in form. I, I would say that this is a course that is set up perfectly for Dustin Johnson to win because he hits it long. He's unlike a lot of bombers. He hits it straight. Yeah. He's got the most perfect golf swing, I think, in the history of the game. He has a mentality like that mentality we just talked about where he just doesn't care. And I think his doesn't care attitude has kind of hurt him before. I think Wayne has helped him a lot uh, for sure. It's interesting. He's not – he's the first number one in the world to miss back-to-back -back cuts since Greg Norman in 1997. I remember that year for Greg. Uh, but this guy right. – and then Norman yeah, came back just, to win two more tournaments before the year was over. Yeah, I, I just, there's a reason. I think they're, let's see all the analytics, Kenny. You know, they, they're looking at all the numbers. They're looking at the stats. And I think they, you know, courses for horses. I, I, I do believe that too. But I, um, it's hard not to ignore. If he, he's also a severe front runner. If he, he's like Tiger. If he gets in front, you can't catch him. But he's got to get in front. And he just hasn't been able to do that lately. Yeah, well, so if I look at if I look at stats, I, I look at uh, John Rahm and I look at Colin Morikawa, and uh, mm. the two of them on on paper are the guys who are scoring. They are the guys who are keeping it in the fairway, who uh, who are uh, ball strikers, and who I mean Morikawa, you know, he 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 puts it out there three hundred yards, but he's got control on it, and he's I think he's probably first in greens and regulation right now. So I, I just, I don't see, honestly, I don't see Kepka and I don't see DJ anywhere in the, in the uh, stats on the PGA right now. So to me, yeah. it's, it's no, a high yeah. the high to look at these guys. But, but if you talk and about, you talked about form, right? And you talked about but Phil, where was Phil in terms of form, right? So, I mean, it, it's yeah. such a crazy thing. It, 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 yes, you have to have form. Yes, you have to be, you know, up there, there in was, terms there of the stats and everything Matsuyama. else. Where was yeah. Hideki Matsuyama in terms of form? Yeah. Like again, right. you know, I do think this is such an unusual year that oh, you've got to just like again, we're not talking about Matsuyama if there isn't that that bad weather that comes in and all of a sudden he was the only guy instead of going to the range, he goes to the phone and maybe his focus changed and the next thing you know, he runs away with it. Uh yeah. it's just so unusual. I don't think like every other sport, I don't think you can look at the saber metrics or the analysis and say, oh, this guy, it's, it's not a video game right now. That's the thing. It's not a video game. I, I think belief has a lot to do with it. And familiarity, that's why my picks have a lot to do with guys who know the golf course. You have to know this golf course because you have to navigate it around, take your losses, get your pluses, and, and weather the storm. The weather, the storms. I really do truly believe that it's not going to be somebody who's high in the stats. I love Morikawa. That's a good pick, though, Kenny, because he's a Cali kid, and he knows Torrey Pines. So for me, uh, he's the, won a major. the familiarity for him is more to me than even 
you know, putting, greens and reg, driving, whatever. I'd rather take I'd rather take familiarity right now than any of those stats. So Corey Connors does not fit into that, but I really like uh, based on speed, but on really on on texture and 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 undulation uh, for link style courses. So somebody who can control the wind. We talked about the high ball flight. Who's might have a lower ball flight might be also significant. The issue is you, you can't have a low ball flight if you're again gouging out of the rough and the wind could affect it. So there's so many factors here, guys. I I, I take all those odds and I would and if I had a lot if I had Ken Shaw's money, which I don't, I would not a, not I would, who does. I would, be, I would be putting on some of those guys who are in the 20 to ones, the 30 to ones, because I, I, I just don't think there's a clear cut favorite. I really don't think there's a clear cut favorite. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's, 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 when, let's you, okay. when you, when you compare the European tour with, with the uh, PGA, well, Rom and McElroy both came up through the uh, European tour. And, mm -hmm. and at the same time, you had Watson, who won what five times uh, the Open? So it it does you know it can go both ways, but I think generally and Watson speaking, was not a low ball hitter. The rough is the real punisher. Hmm? And I just said Watson was not a low ball hitter. He won five U.S. Opens, and you know, yeah, yeah. So and, and Watson, the, uh, by the way, so, go ahead. Watson, by the way, had one of the great feuds of the uh, PGA. Greatest. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 here was here was a. I mean, Watson is one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet, but he he uh, he kept a feud on for years and years with uh, Gary Player. The two of them hated each other. That was that was perhaps the number one feud in uh, in uh, golf history. Was was those two who 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 if you left them alone in the room, there be there would be blood on the floor for sure. Not now, not now. But no, then, yeah. They then. would never have a chance yeah. against the best fighter. Do you guys know who? Here's a quick one for you. I always have some sort of bizarre story. Um, here's the best <laughs> one. Do you know the best? Do you know the best wrestler is on the on the tour? In the in the world the of golf, wrestler? No. wrestler and best fighter. Wrestler? No. I like to fight more than anybody. It's legendary. No. You're going to be so surprised by this. This guy just likes to to wrestle and fight. Ernie Els. Does he? Okay, you're lying. You're lying. No, no. You're, you're making them the look big at easy. The rumors are. I have not seen it. I've done some events with Ernie, and he's the nicest guy in the world. Ernie Els is one of the nicest guys in the world. Oh, yes, yeah. I'm very happy with that. Uh, very nice guy. <laughs> but I will tell you, this dude, it's notorious that he gets on like private jets and that, and he, or in elevators, and he has wrestling matches with people. And he says, "You got to fight me." And by the way, it's full on. He has a. He might. It might be uh, induced by a libation or two, but it's true. <laughs> it's not even close. So here's the thing. Good thing Ernie Els was a nice guy and didn't have a feud with anybody. I would not. For, and plus, he's like six four, right? So I'm not. I don't don't. Yeah, he's go a big guy. Ernie. He's yeah, a big guy. Yeah, okay, do. so Ernie Els. He's going to be fighting Ells Floyd Mayweather is on he? June seventh. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's one I see Ernie event taking I would on Liam Neeson. I see Ernie taking on Liam. <laughs> oh, I've got a particular the capability sense. to do some very dangerous yep. things. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it hurt you in ways still... that you can't dream of. Okay, let's get into the picture, shall we? Okay, we're going to start with Mister Mister Black. All right, he's got Dustin Johnson, Re uh, Patrick Reed, Xander Shoffley, and his long shots are Corey Connors and a late addition. Taylor Pendra, tell us about those picks, Rod. Yeah, didn't I have Phil in there too? Yeah, I have Phil as a long shot too. But well, I'm you had Phil, but we pulled. We, we, yeah, I know. I can Phil only put so many picks. I, I put the entire field on there. Uh, Dustin Johnson, the obvious. I just think he's due again, and I just think again when you're when you are the best player, and he is the best player. It, uh, he is the best player. Player, uh, you're, you're due, and he he wins on on tough golf courses. So I, I like that. I just think just the odds are that he's got to come around one of these days. Uh, Patrick Reed, uh, maybe the, the odds also a prop bet. Uh, will there be some sort of rules controversy <laughs> that could happen? Patrick Reed, because he won there. You know, he won at Farmers Insurance. Different golf course a few months ago. Knows the area. 
And he's another, he's like Kepka, built to win majors, built to win majors. Uh, the other guy that I would say is Xander Shoffley because he's due. He really, we pick him, I pick him all the time, and he just isn't mm -hmm. coming through for me. Mm -hmm. He's due here. A real long shot, some money on him. You know, you want to take a shot at a guy who's going to get no, no, like, won't get any action, going to get really good odds on. That's why I threw him in there. Right. And we all love Corey Connors. Mm -hmm. Go, Corey. All right, listen, guys, I want to thank you for being on the show today. As guests uh, on Joe Tilly Sports, we receive a, a golf horse from Club Lake. All right. Oh, and you have to take yes. me. And you have to take me. Yeah, baby. Well, we're going to play a wind yeah. dance on Thursday, guys. So there you go. That one's on Wind me. dance. And, uh, are, we, are we playing yeah. together as a team? Yeah. We, yeah, we're playing nice. mentally a uh, wind dance. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. I'm, I love wind dance, but it always lives up to its name. I have never played wind dance when yeah. it has not been it's calm. A, a hurricane. Windy. You know oh, who designed wind course. dance? Right? You know who designed it? Uh, uh, I, did, I, did, I did hear. No, not Norman. Satan. Who is? <laughs> who, who designed it? Satan. <laughs> Satan designed windows. Yeah, he's serious. He, he believes that Satan designed. <laughs> Satan designed, Satan designed it. When you see when you see I me play on Thursday, you'll understand. Yeah, I love. Okay. No, I have so heard of designed windows. I just it's not coming to me right now. Listen, guys, uh, thank um, you for. Oh, by the way, well, stick around and, and watch the show because we got Ken Middleton coming on the show, the race longtime race caller from uh, Mohawk, and we're going to talk about racing returning to Mohawk in Ontario. Yay! Golf and racing. Yeah, beautiful. Two of my favorite things. All right, guys. Thanks for Can't being honest. And remember, hey, uh, we're all in it together, boys. Promotional consideration provided by Clublink. Clublink. One membership, more golf. Excuse me, have you heard of the new Divot app? There's a Divot app? No, but there is a Divot. And we're gonna have to do something about that. It's simple, just pick up the Divot and replace it. All sorted, have a good round. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, Reuniting Families, the only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. one 855 787 2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Joe Tilly Sports is brought to you by COSA, Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at COSAonline.com and check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing year-round. Go to hpibet.com for all your wagering options. Become a member today, and your first bet is free. That's hpibet.com. And let's talk some racing, shall we? Our next guest is from Elmira, Ontario. He's a graduate of Conestoga College. He is a seven years he spent as a track announcer at Elmira Raceway. Then four years at Flamborough Downs. He's a pedigree reader, website correspondent for Standard Bread Canada. He's a Standard Bread owner and trainer. He's been calling races at Woodbine and Mohawk for almost 23 years now. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Middleton joins us. Ken, calling races for some 35 years now. What, you started when you were 10? What's going on? <laughs> almost. No, uh, right, right in high school is when I started. Uh, caught the bug early. 
Wow, buddy. I mean, you, you do such an amazing job. Everybody knows your voice. We love it here. And, and great news for racing fans this week uh, with, the, well, with the news that we're going to finally get back to racing next, and on, uh, beginning of uh, January. Uh, uh, like that. Ricky Fowler, by the, by the way, 2008, he, he was, he was uh, qualifying and, and came through. It's an, it's an interesting system that they have. But yeah, when you when you put the uh, the tour pro, the guy who's been on the road, who, who knows, as, as you say, Roddy, one of the one of the key deals is knowing Tory Pines. I, I, I think you're absolutely right. For, for a first time guy there, you're going to be thrilled just to be in the U.S. Open. Could you guys imagine? Imagine, let's say for whatever reason, some fairy came down and just granted you some golf golf magic and it became like a disney movie. and you had a chance i'm sure we've all dreamt about it and you get a chance to go to the u.s open but then you look over and you see phil mickelson and then you see john rom and brooks Kepka and dustin johnson and you are so happy that you didn't wear white pants that day <laughs> Because you had to absolutely be pooping yourself. I know, question, no question about it. And that's the thing, too. These guys think about this, right? So, so some club pro has a round of his life on the Thursday, and he's in the top 10, and he's just – but then the, then the thinking, then the brain goes to work. And there's a reason why that guy's a club pro and not a tour professional, right? And, and, yeah. it's, it, and that, all that experience of – you know, even though these guys maybe haven't won majors before, I mean, they played NCAA golf. They played – clutch golf all the way through they've played on various tours to get here and and uh you know versus the club pro it's just it's night and day you just i just can't see them handling the magnitude of the moment and, and being able to pull it off so joey who so anyway let's go picks? okay i'm gonna get to that in a second i'm just gonna go for the odds first dustin johnson's a favorite at 10 to 1. then we've got yeah. uh john rom 11 to 1. Rory McIlroy surprising at twelve to one. Who like why would you pick Rory McIlroy? The guy hasn't won anything in, in a while now, uh, and, and uh, although he did he did win it. Sorry, he won won at Wells Fargo. I, I, I correct myself, which was his first win in a year and a half. First win as a dad. So uh, a little surprised that he would be the third choice at twelve to one. And then you got a few guys that are fourteen to one: Justin Thomas, Bryson DeChambeau, Jordan Spieth, uh, Brooks Kepka. All, all at fourteen to one, and that's and then then you got Xander Shifley at sixteen to one, uh, uh, Morikawa at twenty two to one. Surprisingly, that he's at high maybe. Patrick Cantley, who just won, has moved all the way up to twenty eight to one. Uh, Patrick Reed's thirty three to one. Phil's fifty to one. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama twenty eight to one. Uh, John Kokrak, 125 to one. I thought there might be some money there. Uh, Stuart Sink, 125 to one. He's got to win this year. Webb Simpson, 28 to one. Jason Day, 60 to one. Uh, Adam Scott, Sergio Garcia, Ricky Fowler, and Corey Connors all at 66 to one. So those are some of yeah. the odds we're working with here. Yeah. So, so your top, uh, your top 10 guys Any value are there? very familiar names who have done very well in the majors in, in the past. That's why Rory is there, right? Simply because of his history, and in San Francisco, where he walked away with the uh, tournament, you know, that's 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 what you're looking at. And Corey Connors, sixty-six to one, it's it's probably appropriate. So if you want to make some money, you know, th that's where that's where you'd go. Uh, you talked about uh, courses for horses, Rod. I mean, uh, I used to go to the racetrack all the time, and if you knew the mutters, you could make a lot of money, right? And and uh, I, I agree with you. You have to be familiar with Tory Pines. You have to be familiar with the pressures of a major in order to win. And all those guys in the top 10 are fall into that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you look at, I, has anybody seen the forecast of what it's going to be like for U.S. Open week? Does anybody know? No. But San Diego is always exactly, pretty nice. It's going to be windy. Yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty windy. nice. It'll be windy. windy. It's, it would so rain, very rarely rains, but very windy. Yeah. This is where I think a Euro, the Euros rarely also win the U.S. Open. Not a lot of Euros win it, right? And uh, I, I think about when it's in the wind and and playing like a Lynx style course, which it's not, but it, I guess you could say it's kind of pseudo Lynx. Phil won on a Lynx course in Kiowa because Phil can play Lynx courses, right? 
Um, it's interesting to note the top 10, see all the Euro players that were there, the guys that if you can, you know, play the win. The issue is the U.S. Open isn't set up like a Lynx course with that rough, right? Lynx courses rarely have rough like that, only fescue. And their greens are demonically uh, built, uh, not... Remember who yes. I picked. Uh, John Rahm, Colin okay, here we go. and yep. uh, Brooks Kepka. And, and right. of Brooks. those three, I, I, I really think it's John Rahm or Colin Morikawa. Uh, and, and then on the long shot, Will Zalatoris. I, I want to hear you guys' uh, comments on, on him. Oh, he's I really like yeah, he, That's a good I, I love the kid. I thought he could have won the Masters. Uh, Colin, uh, Will Zalatoris, uh, you know, rewind this tape. He is going to win a major within the next 12 months. He will win a major. That's how good he is. I really think he will. And it could be this one. He does not get rattled. I loved what he said at the Masters. If uh, I'm stupid enough to think that I can play here, I'm stupid enough to think that I can win here. Uh, he, he's got a naivete. He's got a naivete that is perfect for the game. He's spiny. Yeah. You know, he's got that beautiful swing, and he he rarely he rarely misses. He doesn't miss very often. I love him. I love yeah, that it, pick. And 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 in case people forgot, Rod, I mean, he came in second at the Masters. The kid is That's like six right. foot two. He weighs one sixty five. That must be wearing a fur coat that's soaking wet. There's nothing to it. <laughs> looks like wind would blow him over. But uh, but uh, this kid has some fight in him, and I think he believes in himself. Uh, I I I expect him to finish in the, in the top twenty at least. Uh, but I, but I I. I think if and he I, looks if like I the was Caddy Caddyshack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Caddyshack. Adam Sandler's money. I, I think this kid, I think this or, kid could yeah. make a lot of money for uh, people looking for a long shot. Definitely. No question about it. Zalatoris is a good pick. All right, okay, so, we... so I'll go through mine, guys. Okay, here we are. Uh, Brooks Kapka, Jordan Spieth, Bryson DeChambeau with uh, long shots. Jason Kokrak and and Corey Connors. It's funny that we all picked Corey Connors as our as our long shot. Now Kepka had knee surgery back in early March. He's been steadily improving. He's he won he's won this tournament twice. He's solid. He was solid at the PGA Championship, of course. He's a hell of an athlete. Reminds me a lot of myself. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he's uh, humble. <laughs> he's humble like me. But you know, what? and of course, yeah. I want to see. I want to put uh, Deschambeau in there only because I want to see Kepka and Deschambeau in the final pairing on sunday just because oh, of the you know between be you know because because the uh, you know we, we got some history between these two we they're playing together on sunday i mean just the, the 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 drama would be would be awesome and i just love to see that so that's why i wanted to put uh, put uh, you know put you, you want know, to see a fight in a dish together a yeah fight. i want to see a fight i want, want to see a fight a let's see how we got it they're going to go at it <laughs> Yeah. You want to see it. You're one of those people that goes to that hockey game and you want to see a fight. Yeah. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see DeChambeau taking just a little too long, lining up that putt, or just on the approach, testing the uh, air pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see, oh, yeah. take a little too long because he's oh, testing the, 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 you the air pressure. Right there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right in his back. I don't want to yeah, yeah, right this right back. Swing. Swing. I want to see there Brooks fart in his backswing. And then, and then, let's, uh, go down to eight. Yeah. let's go down to 18 now with Jim Nance and David Faraday. <laughs> well, there he is, about to win the U.S. Open. Yeah. Bryson Sambo. I'll tell you, there, there, look at that. There's a, there's a wonderful shot there. Here's Bryson. He's about to take the shot back. There it is. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a wonderful guy, that Bryson DeChambeau. Uh There's the ball back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. A shot for the ages, a fart for the ages. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. That's it. He wants yeah, Brooks drops the glove. The Brooke, Brooke, Brooke drops the glove. Bryson drops the glove. They're ready to go at it. <laughs> That's good. Bring it on, baby. That would be a fun pairing <laughs> on the final day. Yeah, um, it would be. Yeah. The fight amazing. would probably be after, uh, the, after the round, but it would be good. Kepka, I think he's going off at like 125 to 1 or something like that, Joey. He, he, no, you're, no, you're no, 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 no. Kepka's, Kepka's well, 14 on, to 1. On, uh, Kokrak. on Kokrak. Oh, Kokrak's 125 to 1, yeah. Kokrak's 
Yeah, yeah, yeah you're a the reason, I, the reason I like Kokrak is he's a, he's a bigger guy who's had some success before. He, he, he's now using a longer putter. His putting, his putting stats, have, 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 he's gone from like from 140 to 8. And, and he's really been – I just think he's, he's a guy who, if you're looking for some real – Self laugh or making other people laugh. It's a, it's a, it's a great tonic. So, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for that call. Honestly, Ken, that'll be a lot of fun. We'll definitely have that one yeah. on, on the show. Um, great. Well, listen, I thank thank you for being here. Good luck with Bob blah, blah blah, and she's a sassy <laughs> beach, and and uh, yeah, <laughs> and all the rest, you know. And and uh, yeah, thanks for being on here. And it's uh, it's just so great uh, that we're we're back racing again. And uh, Good times are good times are here again. Thank you, Ken, for being on the show, and I, I'm going to take you golfing very soon. It's my pleasure, uh, and congratulations on the show. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you, Ken Middleton. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now it's time for my COSA Swiss Pick of the Week. Last week, I went to Vernon Downs in New York for the $57,000 Cider Stakes Trot for three-year-old Colts and Geldings. Well, I took Credit Khan, who was leading at the half, great shape along the rail when he broke stride. Ambassador Hanover with Aki Sponstead, training and driving, took control on the stretch and held off a late charge from Beyonciaga. The two on exact returned $25.60. And uh, this week, we're going to go to Yonkers in New York for the seventh race, a pace for fillies and mares. And I'm going with the number two horse, Jive Dancer. I guess I'm a Bee Gees fan. Don't, 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 hate, don't hate me for that. Jive Dancer is a five-time winner, 16 stars, driven by Daniel Dubé for trainer uh, G uh, G Gilbert Garcia Herrera. My record on the year, by the way, is now five wins, two seconds, two thirds, two fourths, two fifths, two eighths, and a tenth. For all the racing updates, visit updates visit Costa TV on Facebook and go to hpibet.com for uh, all your wagering options. There are many tracks racing in many parts of North America, and of course, we'll be racing here in Ontario on Friday. Thank you, Ken Middleton, for that. Well, I have to say I am stunned by what the Habs have been able to accomplish in this postseason. Uh, well, they're not going to get past the uh, the Avalanche or 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 the uh, Golden Knights, but what a nice run for Carey Price and. What a nice run for that young team. And Cole Caulfield is doing a great job. And some great series in round two. Uh, the Avs and Golden Knights is going to be an absolute war. It's probably going to go seven games. It's excellent hockey in that, except for the first or the 7 1 game. But other than that, it's been some great hockey. Some news for the Maple Leafs Austin Matthews is getting some love. The Rocket Richard Trophy winner added a Lady Bing nomination to his collection. He's one of the three finalists for his award for this award. The Buds also announced that they've inked Pontus Holmberg to a three-year entry-level deal. Now, Holmberg is a 22-year-old winger. He racked up 23 points in 45 games for Vasho in the Swedish League. He was named the top Swedish forward. Then in the postseason, he had seven goals and seven helpers to lead his club to the SHL Championship, earning playoff MVP honors. Holmberg was the Leafs' sixth-round pick in 2018. It looks like he's going to be a good one. Now, the more I watch the Brooklyn Nets, the more I realize this is one crazy good team. That is your NBA champion, folks, even without the beard. They are manhandling the Bucs. It's kind of embarrassing. KD is an absolute monster. And uh, watch for the Nets to take it all. Kawhi still alive as Clippers had a nice comeback in that series. You know, it was a better week for the Blue Jays. We have now made their way to Buffalo. They made it north for the uh, next little while. Uh, they'll make... New York State, their home field for a while. They're still having some bullpen issues, but they've got a couple of series wins, which are key to get right back into the thick of that wild card race and don't count them out of the division title run. Now, did you catch the major league debut of Alec Manoa? Okay, this kid was amazing. First, Jay's first round pick in 2019, 11th overall, mowed down that powerful Yankees in the lineup. Second time around, he wasn't so good. But the guy I want to talk about today is our buddy, Vlad Guerrero Jr. This guy is unbelievable. Unbelievable. There he is, whacking his 18th home run of the season. Took the major league lead, or the major league lead at that point. Has the American League lead with 18 big bops. Leads the league in almost every statistical category, or right up there. This guy is phenomenal. Not only is he a triple candidate, uh, triple crown candidate, he might win in just about every single offensive category. Vlad Guerrero Jr. Look at this. Average at this point. In the season, this is where he was. Average first, home runs first, on base percentage first, slugging percentage first, OPS first, total bases first, 
war first. This guy, I've never seen anything like this kid. He's got the potential to be, what? Well, look at it. He's definitely the favorite for MVP right now. Okay, the final jewel in the U.S. Triple Crown, the 153rd edition of the Belmont Stakes. An interesting showdown at Belmont Park. Hot Rod Charlie was looking to go wire to wire in this race. He had some solid fractions, ran a very strong race. But the 65 favorite, essential quality, last year's Breeders' Cup juvenile champ, top two-year-old, made a furious charge at the top of the stretch with Luis Saez aboard. Essential quality would pull away to win it by a length and a quarter. Preakness winner Rombauer was a distant third. It was a first Triple Crown win for Saez and trainer Bob Co uh, Brad Cox. Cox might get another if Bob Baffert's Kentucky Derby a winner, Medina Spirit, gets officially disqualified. It looks like he might. That would give the win to Madeline. Essentially, qual essential quality ran into problems in traffic in the Derby and ended up finishing fourth in that race. But that's it, folks. We close with a look at the folks who made this show possible. They are friends, and they are trusted business associates, and they are all around great guys. I highly recommend them all. A reminder that the show is also available on the Spanglish Network, Zingo TV, and the Fired Up Network. Once again, we want to thank Rod Black, Ken Sean, Ken Middleton for being on the show. And thank you for watching. Join us next week when Steve Beaupre is a program, nation's boxing legend. We'll see you then. Get Aldo at Remax Crossroads. Do you want to buy or sell a home? Could 31 years of real estate experience help you? Why not speak to an amazing team that loves to overpromise and overdeliver? Call 416 Get Aldo or visit www.getaldo.com to find out what next level real estate looks like. RS Demolition and Excavation has extensive experience with complete teardowns and interior strip outs. Looking to build a custom home? RS Excavating Services has the experience you need to build in established neighborhoods. For the highest level of quality and cost-efficient results, we provide innovative demolition solutions completed on time and on budget while ensuring our number one priority, safety. Call 647-852-3006 for an estimate or visit rsdemolition.ca. Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. And let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did 905-686-5678. Gold Line Resources, discovering high-grade gold in Sweden. Gold Line Resources owns a prospective portfolio of four high-grade gold exploration projects located on the Gold Line Mineral Belt of north-central Sweden and one gold exploration project in the Skelftia Belt of north-central Sweden. For more information on how you can invest in this new initiative, go to goldlineresources.com or call one 800 858 9710. Gold Line Resources can also be found on the TSX Ventures Exchange as GLDL. Looking for an advantage in choosing your investment options? Belmont Venture Capital will provide you with the best up to date opportunities in the mid cap and junior sector. The company was formed 12 and a half years ago and is spearheaded by two seasoned veterans of the financial markets with over 80 years combined experience. Go to BelmontVentureCapital.com today for the latest hot picks on the market. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. BelmontVentureCapital.com Brought to you by MNP, one of Canada's leaders in national accounting as well as tax and business consulting. We proudly serve and respond to the needs of clients in the private, public, and not-for-profit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, we provide a collaborative, cost-effective approach to doing business and personalized strategies, helping people and organizations succeed across the country and around the world. Call MNP's Durham office today, 905-579-5531, or go to mnp.ca. Oh,